and we're back. Hello everybody, welcome back to part two of this week's Thursday Thoughts. I'm surprised we got everything on part one that was related to the scent memory and the evolution of scent preferences. So in this particular segment, I'm going to just share some of the viewer comments from last week, uh, just about whatever, and then uh, I will go ahead and give the questions for next week. I'm trying to keep the questions a bit shorter, just in the interest of people's time. Again, I greatly appreciate those of you who take the time to leave comments. And if you don't, if you need to take a week off, I totally understand that we all have lives and I'm very appreciative of any comments that are left. It just makes this a joy. So before I get started, I did want to share with you, you remember my travails with the, the tomato hornworm or the tobacco hornworm, which was giving me fits a couple of weeks ago eating all of the leaves on my tomato plants. But we have had some success. So this is, I, I kind of have the opposite problem now because I have tomatoes. This is just a small number. They all came red at once and I have too many tomatoes, which is a good problem to have. The bushes seem to survive. I didn't do anything, right? I, I let nature take its course this year. I just wanted to learn. And either the birds helped me by snacking on the hornworms or they have gone into the ground to be going to their pupa stage and, and come out as moths. I have not seen any of the moths, the hummingbird moths, and I'm hoping I will. Apparently there can be round two. And as of yet, I haven't seen any hornworms. I got a black light I can look at night which is kind of creepy. They're creepy enough in the daylight, but at night, but apparently they glow in the black light. So um, I have not seen any. S stay tuned, I <laughs> will give updates. Now, they weren't perfect, the tomatoes. There's some, I don't know if you can see that. There's some, you know, things have been munching. So they're not all like that, but that one had some interesting spots. There are also this, I saw when the hornworms were around where there's, I don't know if you can see that, but there's a line. And I don't know if that's from aphids or from June bugs. So those of you who are more knowledgeable, what do you think about that? See, we need to do a gardening segment because I'm fairly new. I've only done one massive garden in the past and that was a long time ago. So comments from last week, which was, last week was about, I showed my warmer collection and so many, thank you to everybody, so many kind comments and some funny comments because yes, it is a rather large collection. I didn't realize how large until I kept bringing them out and I thought, yeah, there were a few more in the closet than I realized and I don't regret a one. I have regretted excess in wax, but I don't regret my excess in the warmers. I use them all, I rotate them and they just give me a lot of joy. And as I've said before, I do not pretend that this is the moderation channel. So for those of you who teased me about that, thank you. That chair in particular said, if she ever feels guilty about making a warmer purchase, she'll just come back and watch that video. <laughs> okay, uh, Brandy said, in addition to that, she said, you're an American with a Toronto Maple Leaf Swarmer and we're Canadian with a Chicago Blackhawk Swarmer. So I love that. We're just multinational, Brandy. Also, the um, I wanted to comment, many of you commented on the Polar Panorama Warmer, which is the cylindrical warmer that has the rotating mechanism inside and it mimics the northern lights. I just find that stunning and a, a number of you did as well. That is still available on our Sensi websites. So uh, whoever your consultant is, I'm a consultant and there are many others that do YouTube videos. Whoever your consultant is, please go pick that up. You will not regret it and it's at a reduced price at the moment. Sorry to hawk that, but I think there should be a polar panorama in every home. It's just that beautiful. Uh, regarding last week, you know, Clementine, my cat, often is in my, my videos. She's like my co-host and many of you said hello to Clemmy commented on her poise. Yeah, she's always ready for her close-up, Mr. DeMille. And she thanks you for all your kind comments. So there were many comments about Sad Santa, and I had to come back to bring him back. So this guy now has been in a few videos. 
if you haven't if you haven't tuned in previously this is the Christmas Claus <laughs> Santa warmer from Christmas warmer from last year from Scentsy and Rachel O'Donnell initially was the commenter who said his eyebrows you know he has just a worried sad depressed expression so I mentioned that and showed him and the, the comments were abundant so I went to read some of these and you know I noticed in the videos when I watch back to see if I've said anything silly or if the sound is okay I notice sometimes my eyebrows my eyebrows do the same thing I'm with these glasses I don't, it doesn't really show right now but I thought you look a little bit like Santa sometimes so I'm just going to set him here some of the comments Patricia Gates said this guy looks like a thin substitute Santa who doesn't like kids <laughs> they had to bring in the ringer you know the, the normal guy was ill or whatever and this poor soul who Kate's kids got brought in we commented that he was a little on the thin side and so Jane when you were telling about your skinny Christmas tree I thought this guy would have been the perfect compliment um, Natalie said Mrs. Claus had him on a diet and we'll see what happens this year Jane said he looks like he's lost his reindeer <laughs> and deck tear came back with saying you know, we, we mentioned that his head, right, is just a front piece. He doesn't have a solid head. She said, I said, just leave the head off. And then you'll understand why he's unhappy, because he doesn't have a whole head. And she also said, Dectier said, that he looks like in the old Monty Python skits when they did the Knights Templar, he reminded her of them. And I went back and watched all of those, and I was just dying. You folks are just so creative. All right, so I'm going to now do the comments for next week. There were many beautiful, not the comments, the questions for next week. So many beautiful expressions that were shared in the, in the uh, scent memories. So go back if you haven't listened to part one. Uh, there were some lovely expressions back there, and I encourage you to go back and listen. So questions for next week, and this is from two of our viewers, and thank you for all the suggestions. Please keep those coming. I have a list, but it's getting shorter. So for next week, this is from Meg Beatty. Thank you, Meg. Suggested that we talk about similar scents across different brands. So this could be across candle, vendor, scentsy. What similar scents do you see? So, you know, and do you have a favorite dupe? So if, if I wanted to give an example of that, um, Midnight Fig from Scentsy smells very much like a diptyque candle that I've mentioned before. Diptyque I buy from maybe once a year to treat myself because it's a, a bit more expensive brand, but oh, their fragrances are gorgeous and their candles burn well for me. But it's not something I can, I can buy all the time. And um, they have a candle called Fig Tree or Figuier in French, which smells very much like Midnight Fig. It's that really earthy, almost dirt, quality and and the fig fragrance I just love that so those two are similar so you there are there are uh, youtubers such as Kentucky Kentucky waxy girl who is my friend Angie who does wax battles from time to time and she'll compare scents that are like scents that are similar to one another so it's uh, I hope I've explained this well. So just similar scents across different brands. Can you list a few? It might be useful just and interesting. And then Cindy. Hello, Cindy. Cindy is my friend from Instagram and YouTube. And she has said, which scent or kinds of scents would you like to see more of or more created? And I love this because if I think about really any vendor, each vendor is he has its strengths, right? And they tend to repeat some of the Bath and Body Works does a ton of pumpkin fragrances and caramel fragrances, and sometimes they they seem to repeat with a new name. But anyway, the point being that there are things which are done a lot and things which are not. So, if if I were to answer that in brief, I wish there were more mint, more explorations of mint. I love mint. And you know, you get the candy cane and you get the chocolate mint and there's a lot of vendors who do that, but I'd like to see even more um, variations on that scent note. 
And finally, just for fun, what is one scent note that is never for you? So I'm not pointing, I'm not pointing specifically at a specific fragrance from a vendor, although it, it could be that, but you know, all vendors have their ones you love and ones you don't. But more specifically, is there a scent note? So Natalie has said salt is something she doesn't want to smell. Um, I believe Carol said she does not care for, for patchouli. You know, there are certain things. And, and was it Taryn who said, you know, she doesn't want to smell black licorice. <laughs> so do you have something that you just are going to run if you see that, that scent note? So share something that is never for you. It's a no. All right, and I'll put these questions in the description box for next week. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching, for sharing your thoughts, for listening, and for just coming around. It's uh, a delight to have made so many new friends here. And welcome to all of you who may be new. And I look forward to seeing you again. Thank you so much and take care. Hug your loved ones. Bye for now.